Camillus, Homo erectus, and Homo sapiens. After thousands and thousands of years of evolution, we have a new discovery. Home sapiens has always been around. Places where we live are key to humans. From caves to huts, and from houses to modern villas, our homes have been evolving with us. Is Home Sapiens fiction or reality? It is up to you to decide. Another week brings another episode of Homo Sapiens podcast. In the first episode, we talked about housing in general. There are different aspects to proper housing. So today we are going to talk about water and access to clean, drinkable water. Let me introduce my guest, Matabo Makuta, National Director of Habitat for Humanity Zambia. Welcome, Matabo. Thank you very much, Katia, for having me. Um, I have a couple of questions for you. Uh, maybe you can help us clarify some of the things about water um, and water and sanitation. What are challenges and dangers that people face when they do not have clean water? Let me say inadequate access to clean and safe water water supply and proper sanitation facilities and good hygiene practices adversely impact human health and economic development. In Zambia, waterborne diseases such as cholera and diarrhea diseases are common and directly related to poor hygiene and uh, limited access to clean and drinking water. Around 2017 and 18 in Zambia, there has been a very big cholera outbreak, where 4,833 innocent Zambians were infected and 98 people unfortunately lost their lives to the deadly disease of cholera. It is worth noting that this cholera outbreak took place in informal settlements, 17 uh, settlements out of which 15 were informal settlements in Lusaka. The other challenges related to access to clean and portable water at times is the location of the water sources. Safety becomes a challenge if water sources are not provided with, within the reasonable walking distance as women and girls are usually assaulted, raped, and even killed when they take trip to draw water, especially in the early hours of the morning or late hours. Diarrhea and cholera leads to high child death under the age of five, mostly here in sub-Saharan Africa. The challenge also of lack of water in schools also goes with the high dropout of schools, especially of girls, when they are unable to take care of their menstrual cycle needs. These are the challenges, Katia. Okay, thank you, Matabo. The challenges you described, um, are these uh, challenges only uh, typical for Zambia? And you mentioned some big cholera outbreaks and some uh, diseases uh, that, that happened and took victims in Zambia. So is, is this typical to Zambia or you can say that this situation is uh, typical in many countries in sub-Saharan Africa? Indeed, Zambia is not immune. Most of the African countries are facing similar challenges. Some are even Western Zambia situation, as you see when I discussed uh, the other questions that Zambia is making some progress in this regard. According to 2018 Zambia Demographic and Health Survey, Zambia is actually um, taking control, where 72% of households in Zambia now have access to safe drinking water, compared to 63% in 2014. However, nearly half the population in rural areas remain without access to safe drinking water. Despite the rural areas still remain disadvantaged, as only 27% of the population have access to improved sanitation as compared to uh, 20% in 2014. So actually, this is a blanket challenge in most African countries. And why doesn't everybody have access to clean water? What, what is the problem to provide access to clean water to everyone? 
Affordability is the main challenge. Because of poverty, mainly mostly the most vulnerable communities in Zambia are affected by high levels of poverty. To be able to have access to clean water, as the service is user pay, you have to pay for water. Additionally, high unemployment rate sitting at 11.41% as of 10th November 2020 also poses a challenge as it affects people's disposal income. The COVID-19 pandemic has exacerbated Zambia's microeconomic vulnerabilities, where the kwacha, the local currency, depreciated by 30% since the beginning of the year. And this acts as constraint on fiscal strength of the government also to be able to provide adequately these social services to the communities. And can I ask uh, how much uh, people have to pay for portable water or for running water in their house? For example, what would be the typical rate that uh, households pay in urban setting or in rural setting? Um, let us assume that a household of five people, which is the average household here in Africa and in here in Zambia, it's even more in informal settlement. The the level of water they need may be twenty liters or two in a day and a liter may cost something like around one quarter. That is just an estimation because now because of the prices that are changing, um, it looks like uh, the costs are even becoming more unaffordable even to pay for these uh, water services as well. So affordability is one of the biggest obstacles to proper water and sanitation. Are there any other bigger things that prevent um, water piping and proper sanitation facilities for people in rural areas and especially in informal settlements? I would say the government is the sole uh, provider and is the government ministry that is responsible to ensure that there is adequate and clean portable water is the Ministry of Water uh, Development, Sanitation and Environment Protection. And mostly our African governments, not only in Zambia, have inadequate investments. Other issue could be capacity absorption, partly due to procedural, institutional, and technical capacities, coupled with inadequate financing mechanism that compounds the problem of insufficient investment in the wash sector. And also because the private sector engagement into this water surface goes with profit making, so it often not a, a viable business. That could be done on a social uh, service level. But who is responsible, in your opinion, Matabo? Um, What do you think? Who is responsible for solving it? Is it only the governments, the businesses, or there is also a role that the international community, uh, international organizations, or even local communities can play to resolve this issue? Indeed, governments don't have capacity to do it alone. We also believe and agree that partnerships and collaborations is the only way that government can be able to deliver on their mandate. But paramount to that, government of Zambia is responsible for solving this problem by way of being in charge of putting in place the policy and regulatory framework of the sector by making sure that the execution functions are efficient and sustainability of water supply are delegated to what sector actors that could be able to act as the executing arms of the government, as well as making sure that water resources management are well taken care of in terms of development, conservation, protection, and uh, preservation of ecosystems. And maybe just a few things uh, to end our conversation. Uh, You mentioned about uh, this problem in Zambia, but if we look at the country Zambia, where the problem with water or proper sanitation is the worst, if if we look at the country, can you say that it's um, in the northern part of the country, in western part, uh, which areas 
have the poorest connection to water and where the population live in informal settlements, struggle with carrying water or securing potable water for drinking purposes or even for hygiene? I would say, yes, like I mentioned during um, my um, responses earlier, I mentioned that in the rural areas, we still have a low take up uh, in terms of the rural communities accessing clean and portable water. But if we were to take in the geographics in terms of the urban and the, and the peri-urban, largely Lusaka city is mostly affected simply because of high urbanization rate. Lusaka City Council is absorbing high numbers of migrants that come from the rural areas and mostly uh, locating in these informal settlements around the Lusaka city. So we have these large numbers of informal settlements that were in 2017, 2018, there has been unfortunate outbreak of cholera and diarrhea due to low accessibility to clean and portable water. So I can actually equate a big challenge to informal settlements for access to decent water. And how, uh, uh, I haven't asked that earlier, but it would be good to know uh, or to, to have an understanding how big is Lusaka? So how many people are living there and how many people or the percentage of the population of Lusaka that might be living in informal settlements around Lusaka. Yes, uh, Lusaka city is, is, is one of the largest. I think it holds close to 2 million inhabitants and 60% of the population in Zambia still resides in the rural areas. 40% resides in the, in the urban areas. But out of that 40%, 70% of it lives in the informal settlement of Lusaka or informal settlements in Zambia, by the way. Yes, so it's quite a big number and actually quite a lot of water points and a lot of uh, portable water is needed to provide for that population. Indeed, Katia. Water in a home is life. Home without water is not habitable. Home is a source of pride. Home with access to basic services like water and sanitation, it becomes complete. And the lives of the citizens in a decent home is a complete package. So we cannot afford to not promote or support the access to clean water that is equated to decent housing, especially during this COVID-19 when other health guidelines is to shelter safely and wash hands regularly. This too goes together to minimize the transmission of COVID-19 and prevent loss of life. It is our hope indeed, Katia, and we are very privileged as Habitat for Humanity Zambia to be part of this noble goal. Indeed, Amatabo, you're so right. I think in the times like this, water is really life to many people and it's a measure that can save them and it can save their lives and it can protect them. So I hope uh, that we can do more work and we can make sure that we can provide access to water, to safe water, to clean water, to the households that need it the most. And those are the most vulnerable people because they live uh, really with very basic means and they have the right and they deserve to have water in their life. So thank you very much for this conversation. It was great to talk to you. And I do hope that the work of Habitat Zambia can help many more people to have access to this basic and the most needed service. Thank you very much and goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Home Matters to Humans. You've listened to the Home Sapiens podcast produced by Habitat for Humanity. It is part of the Build Solid Ground project funded by the European Union. 